I really was a big fan of him. But moving forward, Impact and Paul Strunk. From what we saw of Paul Strunk earlier, I don't think this is going to be a great match for them. Yeah, you know, they struggled to take a round against Gatekeepers, and Gatekeepers kind of styled on him, clowned on him a little bit. Came with a little bit of an unconventional play style, just thrown down their ultimates in the spawn of Pulse Drunk. And Impact, they're no joke either. These are two of the best teams, Gatekeepers and Impact. And Pulse Drunk, they've, they've struggled to find vic uh, success against anybody. So I, I don't feel too good for him moving into this one. Is it comps? Is it raw skill? Is it a little I think a, little I think a lot of it is experience. Yeah. Uh, this is this team's first experience in a competitive setting. Uh, we, they never played in the Rivals series back in the day. We never saw them in Battle Wrecked. Uh, so this is where they are learning. And it just happens to be on the biggest stage in Battle Wrecked history. And against uh, two of the strongest against, teams. Yeah, against the best players in yeah. Battle Wrecked. So it, this is just one of those unfortunate circumstances. You got to learn somewhere. And this is just where Pulse Trunk is learning. Are we going to see Impact try a couple of new things since they might have Pulse Trunk in a position where they can? Uh, well, we're going to see a Lucy. We get to see a good off Lucy again. That's always fun. Yeah. I'm not sure what else they'll pick. I know they've been playing a lot of Freya. We saw the Bako earlier. Mm. I hope we get to see Jumong, as I think Jumong is incredibly good, especially into Rygon. If Rygon uses his mobility and just gets trapped, Jumong's going to gonna just lay some M1s into you and deal quite a lot of damage. We're going to see Bako Pestilus. Pestilus. Okay, I really like the Jumong pick now. Pestilus? Pestilus. One of the two. Yeah. Bug boy. Bug boy. Bug boy. <laughs> I like Bug boy. <laughs> Bug boy's pretty good. I do really like the Jumong now, though. Jumong's Reign of Arrows is incredibly good against Queen as it farms energy off the Queen, and mm -hmm. it can hit the enemies that are surrounding it. The battle right for the range of uh, the AoE of the Reign of Arrows increase is really good since if there's a Queen dropped, you want to sit in it. Mm -hmm. The Reign of Arrows is the perfect answer to that, as you can't really sit hey. in it. We do see the Jumong. Jumong, and then a Thorn for the melee. A double melee. We're going to see Thorn and Rygon with a Pestilus in between. Uh, maybe just going for the safe bet. They'll both survive a long time. I mean, look at survivability. Every single person on Pulse Drunk has some sort of self-heal uh, and or other person heal. Yeah. Shields. Uh, they'll survive for a long time, but I don't think it's going to be a lot this of fun. Is like, this seems like one of those situations where it's like, we know we're outskilled. Let's try to cheese. Yeah. Let's, let's just do what we can, see if we can get in there. This is like, w Impact, they're about to like get six pooled. And we'll see if they can hold off this six pool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're going to bring out the six pool reference. I'm okay with it. That's actually not bad at all. Or it could maybe just be, maybe these are Pulse Drunk's uh, mains. Yeah. A lot of times when you just Possible. back to a corner, it's like, let's just play who we're best with. Because I, I have, one of my favorite parts about this is no matter how bad your matchup is, there is a way to win. Yep. And it might suck. It might be a really difficult win, and you might have to play your champion the way you never want to play your champion. But there's a way out. Sometimes it feels like there isn't, and honestly, in certain skill matchups, there probably isn't. Yeah, if you're, you're probably guaranteed a loss sometimes. If you're outskilled and you have a comp with a disadvantage, you probably just lose. You're probably gonna lose, and that's okay <laughs> yeah. because losing's how you learn, and you start to realize exactly how bad you are. Absolutely. And that's what I deal with every single day. I queue into a battle right ladder. That's what I queue, uh, come into with life. Yeah. <laughs> oh you you oh lose my God. and you learn. It, are you okay? <laughs> are you alright? I, I need pleasure. some help. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, when we're just talking about what they're going to go into. Pulse Drunk, very aggressive. You're going to have Rygon followed by Thorn. Essentially, Thorn might try and use that space and entangle yep. to use a couple of uh, things so that Rygon can land that big, fat space bar. It's 20 burst damage. It's pretty heavy. Um, and big AoE as well. Yes. On the Lucy. Yeah, exactly. You, the Lucy. Ex just what I wanted to point out. We saw it last game. A team tried to capitalize on a Lucy pick with aggression. Functional Sociopaths tried to do it, and it didn't work out for him. But this time, Pulse Trunk, they're even going harder with that commitment. They're committing a double melee pick to try to chase down the Lucy. Godoff probably saw this draft, and he was like, man, I don't want to play this game. Yeah. I don't want to play Lucy into this. <laughs> they're just gonna. He's just going to get ran at consistently. The Thorn Burrow in the Heavenly Strike from the Rygon, and even just like the Pestilus, like throwing peers. Uh, fears down onto him, it's going to be really hard for the Lucy. I mean, the biggest thing that I think Paul Strunk can do is is to try and line up CC. You have an Entangle, then an Incap, then a Panic. Yes. Do that on just one of them. That's I gross. Don't, I don't care who. Probably not the Lucy. Do that on one of the other two. Do that on a Baco or a Jumong. Probably Jumong, because he's the one that can just do so much AoE damage. So just, just lay on him for six seconds. Let him just do nothing. Don't let him help, and then just put it on Baco and Lucy. That is probably going to be uh, one of the best bets going into this, because if you let Jumong go unanswered, you will die. Yeah, it's like what we used to see with Legendary. For those of you familiar with the North American scene from about a year ago, uh, Legendary, if you tried to punish onto like a Reap What You Sow or Ninjas on the Shifu or the Sirius, 
Jumong at first would just rain of arrows you and just deal a ton of damage. Yeah. And that's what we might see if Pulse Trunk hard commit onto Godoff's Lucy. We might see Dizzler just kind of take away the match with the amount of damage Jumong can put out. Yeah. And man, you literally, you just cannot ignore the Jumong. You honestly can't. And then going for him, especially if he builds up those three charges, good luck. Yeah, good luck. So I think I think Chain CC is going to be really big for Pulse Drunk. I think it'll be one of their best bets for getting this uh, health pool to an even matchup because overall, as you said, they're gonna they're they're gonna feel a little bit uh, outranked for a little part of this. As you said, this is one of the best European teams against a newer competitive European team. Yes. Um, I'm excited to see the the Godof runaway show though. Yeah. This is like the the Godof survival game. He's no longer playing battle right. He's playing uh, survive. He's, yeah, he's playing survive. Survive battle right. <laughs> yeah, live as long as possible, and we'll see if he's able to. I feel pretty good for Impact going into this for the. I think he's just getting a teaser into the new battle royale mode. <laughs> hey, nice plug. <laughs> <laughs> SLS, you picked a good one. But I, I've, like I said, I feel really good for Impact based off the, the Dizzler Jumong. And not only is it a Jumong pick into a pretty favorable comp, it's Dizzler's Jumong. Best in the world at the character. Three, two, one, fight. All right. Let's see if Pulse Drunk can try and put up a final fight in their last match or group stage. Tangle and a Dizzler. He doesn't have his charges yet. He did have enough for Prowl. Now he's got his charges. Good luck locking onto him. Vague's gonna deal with uh, the parry. He's gonna smack into it. And Fest is gonna help protect his teammate. This is really strange. Full Strunk are playing incredibly passive for running a double melee comp. It yeah. almost seems like they're just running range characters. I, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, they have a Thorn who's the best range in the game. <laughs> so they kind of have a range champ. They did secure that first orb. So maybe they're just gonna try and go for a couple of ult combos. But even so, their ults are damaged over time, so they need to catch them. Oh, when they have no more escapes. Maybe Ooh. just trying to look at a punish on Gata or Bako. A really Grouping nice up. Things looking pretty pretty unfavorable here for the red team as the damage is starting to add up. And up top, oh, Vague lets that geez. ultimate rip, getting a ton of damage, and the rate of arrows just putting in work. Oh, and he can't survive through that. And things kind of falling apart for Pulse Drunk is impact. There's no pressure on Godoff. We talked about how all of the pressure would be on Godoff. Look at his health bar. He's sitting at full max recoverable and a full bar of energy, not even needing to use roll. Pulse Drunk really had a hard time getting onto the back line. You mentioned it though, playing passive. And I don't know, maybe their oh. game plan's a little bit different than what we thought. Maybe they're going for the ult combos. Maybe, you know, you get a Thorn into a Rygon combo. You're stuck in both those. Right. I mean, you're a goner. But who, who are you going to stick in that? It's not going to be Jamong. You're going to have to find the Baka or the Lucy to snag with those ults. At that point, how long is it going to take you to build that up? How much damage are you going to take from a distance? Vague is just going to keep putting pressure on the Pestilus the moment he gets a chance. Yeah, and we, we see through the score... Uh, reflected why you generally don't want to play double melee and why you see the more traditional support melee range comp. In a double melee comp, Dizzler, he is going to have free reign to do whatever he wants, unpressured, sitting so far back, throwing out M1s and M2s. We see it already, just the rain of arrows being dropped. He's untouched and just getting away with whatever he wants, putting out a lot of damage. Got to gotta actually panic, get double panic before her panic class comes out. Hey, taking quite a bit of damage already, Carpet. Ultimate, going for the orb oh. and snagging the Pestilus on the way oh. through. An ultimate from Baco as well. This is what they have to worry about, the burst damage. Going full ultimate. Thorn's losing a lot of health. Pestilus trying to stay away. Thorn might actually just die here. Oh, Double Reign of Arrows, he better be careful where he comes up. Yeah, we talked about that Reign of Arrows into this matchup, and we see it there. A sick Clarity Potion purges off the, the parry, too, from Rygon. And now Pulse Trunk sitting with nothing left. A nice in cap negates the ultimate cast. He tries to get it again, but Vague's like, nah. Vague's not letting any ultimate be cast here, and Pulse Trunk are getting ran over by impact. Another ultimate. He, maybe Rygon wants to try and get it out. No. Oh. <laughs> no. I think that was intentional, but it still oh, yeah, hurt it my soul. Still made me a little bit sad. The Rygon, he kind of knew what was coming. It's all over for Geekish Nerd and the boys in round two. We'll see if they can make some adjustments. I really think that what Im uh, Pulse Drunk needs to do is get on the back line. Godoff and Dizzler are able to get away with far too much. And with this double melee comp, Pulse Drunk is spending way too much time committing onto Vague as Vague initiates. I think it's spot on. Putting a lot in Nabako. Even if you take a lot of health off of him, he will survive for so long with the Lucy at his back. Yeah, he's a liver. He doesn't go down too easy. 
<laughs> you really got to put work into it if you want it to go down. But again, playing so passively. Maybe a little bit fearful of the Rain of Errors, but once you see that come down, I think it's pretty fair that you can just go on to God of. And now we're finally going to see Thorn try and find God of. He's going to miss entangling roots. I just feel a little bit haphazard right now. Oh my oh god. Boy, oh boy. Big double ultimate there, getting out so much damage. And now the Pestilus trying to land a fear onto Gadoff however he can, but he's definitely dead here, as is Sephrodod. With nowhere to go, the Pestilus eats a big Baco alt. And man, this is all but over. Endless, endless. endless. <laughs> that's something that's really cool about Baco, and Vague is really doing a great job of it this game. So many interrupts on that character, and if you can play well and understand what your enemies want to do, y you can almost shut them out. We saw the ultimate cast get canceled twice from the Rygon right there, and in the round prior, Thorn had his ulti cast canceled twice. Really nice play from Vague, understanding how to use his interrupts. Uh, it's not very noticeable because I don't think it's in the tooltips, but the space, the, the pull on the space from Bako is, can be a really heavy interrupt for most abilities. Yeah. Three, uh, there's a couple two, I think they can bleed one, through it. Uh, a couple of really big, I think, heavy ult charges don't get interrupted by his space bar. Uh, between that, his E, he's got a Bork you got to worry about. Rygon and Thorn really just finding a tough time landing even their skill shots right now. Plan aside, I think they're going to have a bigger pain if they can't find oh. value in their abilities. Hitting that bulwark, so unfortunate for the Rygon. He chooses to still initiate it, and the Dragon Slayer comes out. That's definitely going to land as Dizzler understands where Geekish Nerd is going. And now the double reign of arrows. This is Jumong's heaven carpet. He not only did he get the ultimate into Rygon, but he got the ultimate Rygon into orb to secure the orb for his team. I mean, oh. he is just ha this is a playground oh. for him. Who, who kills him? Which one's going to get him? Oh, oh. No. So much damage from all uh, scenarios here is Impact. They're running away with it again. And Dizzler, he even steals that orb. No rest for Thorn as he's going to go down up top. Dizzler's pressure was unrelenting. The Prowl even going to dodge the panic. And Impact are proving why they're one of the best of the best. Another ulti cast. A another one. Another one. Another one. Dizzler. He's not MVP. I don't know what happened that he's, round. He's dizzling him. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> They're getting dizzlered. Getting dizzlered. <laughs> that sounds gross. It and does. I want to be involved with it. 884 <laughs> damage for him. Impact one round away and definitely probably going to get this 5-0 sweep. Pulse Strength playing a composition that clearly didn't really have a plan going in. <laughs> this doesn't feel that way. Um, obviously, they're great players. I mean, look at that. Giga Shirt, number five preseason 3v3. That's still a feat. Yeah. So we know their skill, but this is where competitive Three, play two, changes everything so heavily. It is nothing compared to ladder. It changes just the yeah. way you play, your approach on things, what you're up against. These players that have been playing together for a year, yeah. or even maybe even longer if they came from BLC. Oh, wow. Really nice double panic from Biceps to start this one off. And this round, incredibly different to start than the last yeah. two before. But again, God of still not the target. I feel like it'd be your easier target, but they're keeping him at bay. It doesn't matter. Baka's just running around doing what he wants. Here comes an ult. Who's he going to oh. pick? He's only going to get the stun damage, but the queen gets erased. Oh. Yeah, as does the health pool of the Pestilus. Yeah. The infest comes out. He's able to make it away for now, but I'm not feeling too uh, confident for his future. Oh, and here comes the ulti. Another one from Dizzler. He lands a lot of damage onto biceps. And this Jumong, this is just such a good game for Jumong. Oh, geekish nerd. Looks like he feels like this one's over. Throwing another ulti into the wall. And you know, Signature impact, move. impact is impact. Yeah. I mean, if there's ever a team that's going to do this and you shouldn't feel bad, it's going to be impact. I think they, re they realized after two rounds that uh, team comp aside, skill aside, all those things wasn't going to be easy. Yeah, and that brings us even closer to our potential tiebreaker game in Group B, now Gatekeepers. They need to win their last game against Weed and Boys, which is our next match, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, if if they manage to do so, we will have a tiebreaker for first place. Quite a lot of 5-0 sweeps today. Yes. Uh, you're up a little bit more, maybe, well, I don't say one-sided, but a little more slanted as far as where the skill sits uh, in comparison to North America. I, d I don't mean to be rude, but I, there are lots of 5-0s against Pulse Drunk. I guess that's true. I think those were the only 5-0s. No, I thought there was a th uh, I guess it was a 5-1. I'm yeah. thinking of that as a 5-0. Yeah, right. I, close enough. That was a 5-1. Right. That's right. really close. You're right. You know what? I wasn't here last week, so so my my, my uh, pool of what I watched is definitely slanted. That is very true. That's fair. Uh, I'm a liar because one week was uh, the week number one was pretty exciting for Europe. Uh, but just checking out some replay packages, really not a lot to speak on. We saw a team really struggle and another team really not struggle. Uh, <laughs> 
Sick analysis. <laughs> and, I mean, let's be honest. There's not a whole lot else to say. No, honestly, this was this was the Dizzler show. Dizzler did whatever he wanted. We saw him casting like four ults around. He was just playing so incredibly well in Impact kind of proving why they're considered the best of the best. And I don't mean to, to ride on Pulse Strong too hard. Uh, this was an incredibly hard match for him going into it. And they're they're playing against literally the best of the best yeah. in their first competitive event. Like, shout outs to them for even making it here. Uh, the fact that they are losing against Impact is nothing to be ashamed of. I think the amount of people